evening. There's no gavel, so welcome. Happy New Year. <laughs> um, today is the regular Board of Education meeting, Tuesday, January 2nd. Starting a little bit late, our apologies. Let's start with administrative reports. Alan. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for coming out. Um, to with Dan Warmog and McKelly uh, from Board of Finance and also our, our administrative team and our, our GEA president. Thank you for, for being here this evening. And uh, welcome to 2019 and to families and students. Uh, we wish you a very happy new year. Uh, plus one budget tonight, just as a, a reminder to people, uh, the board moves a plus one budget to the Board of Finance uh, for the three board meeting and that's on January 22nd. Uh, thereafter, we'll have a full discussion of uh, quality and diversity, uh, the, the presentation of the administrative budget, and then the full board uh, adoption of, of the board's budget. And I'll go through that again at the presentation time. Uh, the next two negotiations resumes tomorrow uh, for those members of the board here on that committee. Roof replacement at the high school is complete, so that's, that's good news. Uh, we recently uh, presented, Jenny and Mark uh, talked about the uh, board's large capital projects uh, recently at the CPAC meeting and these are just this is just my interpretation uh, there it seems like the town is preparing some projects uh, to go to referendum um, on the board side there's certainly interest in the high school project uh, that needs to take place the roofs and solar and we'll see what the next meeting where that take, takes us but that's for uh, January 17th uh, the construction of the high school man trap, uh, which is really the double doors, uh, that doesn't need to be overseen uh, by a building committee project. Uh, so CPAC had indicated, at least the leadership of CPAC indicated that we did not need to go through a building committee for that particular uh, work that we completed. Uh, following up on the solar, uh, we are trying to get the DES, uh, the information that they need from the last meeting, which was very successful. Uh, I did share with people that, that, that Craig has drawn up a schedule of, of deadlines to meet um, and that has been helpful and we're also working with the Board of Selectmen here in Wetlands and PNZ requirements for, for the time so it moves, is moving forward. Uh, we're still looking for a few good men and women for our, ge our Generations Mentoring Program so if you have any, if you're so inclined or can get others to help us out we would appreciate that and certainly Chris would appreciate that. Uh, we have a chorus concert next Thursday, uh, January 10th at the middle school. Band is also on Thursday, January 17th. And there's a variety of activities. We'll, we'll post those for you. Just a reminder about the Craig Legislative Breakfast, January 24th. Uh, a nice event for people to come to if you've never been to that before. It's an opportunity to engage with our legislators on a variety of topics. Start time study. Uh, we've received a a very good uh, res response back on the surveys. I don't know of, of our students, if they took it today or have already taken it, um, but there's been a good response. It closes for students uh, and parents on January 11th, and then the committee itself uh, will reconvene. So again, very high response back. Thank you to the members of the community uh, who have, com have completed that. Believe it or not, there's an early release uh, for, for professional development uh, uh, building professional development across the district. That's on uh, Tuesday, January 15th. And the next board meeting is scheduled for January 16th. Um, when it comes to calendar, uh, um, I have a request for the board to consider another date, but I'll discuss that the, at the, when we get to the Board of Education calendar. Uh, but we're all, we're, we're welcome back, everybody. Uh, first day back, um, everybody come in enthused and ready to go. Is not correct? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> all right, questions for Alan, comments? I have a quick one. Helen, on the, I'm sorry, on the mentors program, are we looking for any particular grade levels? Um, it, it's, it's primarily the primary school uh, grade one. I, I guess we could, I think we've been a wee bit flexible, but primarily it's, it's at the primary school level. Okay. Remember we had challenged each other to come up with one warm body each. Um, so. He didn't ask me, but I didn't need any more challenges. <laughs> the description was in the last. Yes. Right. Okay. Welcome back. Happy New Year to our student representatives, Maddie and Dwaritha. What's happening at GMHS? Okay. Well, I mean, today was our first day back, so I don't have a whole lot. Um, but drama rehearsal started today for our musical Greece. Oh, nice. 
we had advisory today, which is we took the start time study in our advisories. It was emailed out to all of us, and so in the advisory agenda, um, we did take the survey. So we did that today. Um, Can I ask what, what, what the buzz is about that? Um, I mean, mostly in my advisory, it was like, dang, we're graduating this year, <laughs> and we don't get to come to school at 8 o'clock. Um, but the survey itself went really well, and okay. we talked about it in my advisory. Like, yeah, I think it would be beneficial if school started a half hour later or whatever um, is decided. Just we talked about in the mornings in our first period, the first 10, 15 minutes, we're all still waking up and just stuff like that. And there's like just tardies and things like that would probably be less common if everyone was coming okay. in a little later. Okay. Yeah, uh, my advisory took that as well, and in addition to that survey, um, we also did a job shadow day survey because we're preparing for that. That'll be February 1st, yeah, right? February yeah, February 1st. February 1st is job shadow day, um, so they're trying to increase more uh, student participation in that, um, which is, and in my personal experience, job shadow day has been uh, a very, very interesting day for me. I've participated both the years I've been in high school, so looking forward to that. Um, and other upcoming news, the robotics build season will begin this Saturday, January 5th. It'll be the kickoff of the six week build season. Um, those six weeks are all we have to build our robot. So that's gonna be very exciting for us. Um, midterm exams uh, begin the week of uh, January 15th. Uh, they go through 15th through the 18th uh, exam week. Um, and uh, the Northern Regionals uh, Music Festival for uh, choir, band, and orchestra, that'll be uh, January 18th and 19th, and we have approximately, I think, eight or nine students uh, participating in the choir, band, and one student who got selected for orchestra. So we're very excited for that. Um, Poetry Out Loud, uh, the school finals will be on January 23rd, and that's, essentially all I have for now. Um, I have a quick question, then I'll open up to the board. So does Dr. Flush still advise the robotics club? And who's our faculty advisor this year? Uh, it's Mrs. Bastian. Very good. Any other questions for the student representatives? All right, thank you. Teaching and learning. Mr. Hershon is going to share an update of how STEAM is making its way into the classrooms and specifically the STEAM day at the middle school. Two weeks, uh, a week before break, I think, right? Uh, on uh, December 7th. Oh, even longer. Um, so I'm also presenting um, as a member of the district STEAM committee tonight uh, just to kind of share some of the work that we've done over the past two years. So couple things. Uh, this is my second year on the committee, and one of the really wonderful changes that occurred in my first year was that Mr. Tramberg had asked us to shift um, what had previously been done on that committee to work um, instead of at one whole committee, split into collaborative action teams. Um, so these are some of the collaborative action teams uh, that we had to celebrate last year, which included the development of an AP computer science program, the development of some instructional strategies and materials around the chemistry of art, uh, implementing two different redesigns of how curriculum for library media specialists are introduced both at Wells Road and Kelly Lane, including the implementation of iPad carts at Kelly Lane. Um, there's now a model where it's far more pushed into the classroom where the library media specialist is going into the different classrooms to push those technology skills in with students as opposed to a coming to the li library to get those skills. Um, but the thing that I'm proudest of, because it, this is where my involvement was, was our expansion of STEAM Day. STEAM Day is something that existed uh, prior to the past two years, um, something that uh, Dr. Law had previously run within the district, uh, and was something that we had done it as a district um, throughout the years. But last year, and I'll talk more about that in a moment, we expanded on what we did with STEAM Day. To go into this year with uh, STEAM Cats, we expanded chemistry there to actually developing a full course, um, which will be part of what you'll be talking about later. Um, one group is focusing on creating a database 
of STEAM-based activities that teachers can draw from as a resource within our, uh, in, within our district to find different activities they can do to embed STEAM in the classroom regardless of content area. Uh, we want to expand our offerings around computer science, so implementing what that looks like has been another cat for this year. And we're looking at how we can grow some of the, it's called growing Google and teacher technologies. The goal of that cat is identifying what are those resources that we already have within the district that are free of use, that we're not currently leveraging. So we've been expanding our partnership with Google as we have Google Apps for Education as part of our, within the district. We've been exploring different avenues for how we can apply that, whether it's looking at Google CS First for computer science programming for grades uh, three through eight, or looking at Google Hangouts for how to positively use social media um, for students to collaborate digitally. We've partnered with them. We've been down to Google, Mr. Tranberg and myself, and we're actually having some Google representatives come in to provide some training for teachers at that January 15th uh, half-day PD and some continued partnerships where they'll be coming to our STEAM committee to provide some, some help as we continue to investigate these tools. And our biggest one was at the end of last year, we did a survey of STEAM, and a lot of students responded that they would love to be a part of this. So we added a number of student representatives for both middle school and high school members, Doritha being one of them. Um, so we have students involved in all four of these cats this year to have the student voice involved. STEAM Day at the middle school, as I said, this is not necessarily a new thing, but a, a rebranding. So over the past two years, we've kind of reworked the day so that it's an entire full day of school where everything the students touch throughout the day is related to STEAM. STEAM activities happen in the classroom where in each curricular area, they transform their day from their normal curriculum to a STEAM-based activity. So you can see there were things in the science classrooms where students were building catapults or playing with circuits. And you can actually see the full list of that uh, I provided to you this evening, our STEAM Day brochure, where you can look at all the different activities that we went through on that day. But you can see we made sure to hit each part of that, whether it was science, technology, with having our high school and middle school robotics teams come and present how different robots worked towards to our students. Engineering, we had students in social studies classrooms building structures um, for different purposes, whether it was for height or for strength. You can see here, I actually have 20 pictures of these two young students as they built larger and larger towers. They got up to 10 textbooks held with, uh, I believe it was 10 sheets of paper. Um, how we implemented arts, whether it was through Lego coming in or through designing chairs in our different classroom, or math, where we used our, some robotic skills to solve some graphing problems. And we also had Dr. Flush come in. You, you, so perfect uh, connection to what you just referenced. His partnership with the robotics team has expanded to be a partnership with the middle school too. This is his second year he's helped present this team back. Along, aside from the explorations, we've also incorporated a STEAM career fair where students got to go around to different local businesses um, and see how they take the skills that they apply in their, every, in their everyday classrooms and apply it to the outside world. This year we were able to get Lego to come in. We were able to get Jefferson Radiology, one of the larger employers in our, dis in our district. Um, and we had in individuals from the Granby Artists Association um, and a full list of those businesses you could find on the back of that brochure. One goal from last year, we had eight <coughs> businesses participate last year. Our goal was to expand to 16. We were able to achieve that this year through partnership with Junior Achievement. They helped facilitate those relationships as we went through trying to ask more and more businesses to be a part of it. It was so successful that we even had businesses calling after the event asking how they could be a part of it for next year. Finally, some next steps for STEAM. At Wells Road, they wanted to expand upon what we've done um, with the STEAM Day at the middle school to create a family STEAM night. Um, continuing to go into NISTI and further articulate those K-12 computer science curriculum and the standards along with that. 
transitioning our district from Schoology to Google Classroom so that we are using the same resource district-wide and there isn't, what, which we currently have at the middle school, this uh, sometimes confusion over different teachers using different platforms, having a uniform platform so that all the students get that similar experience. Professional development partnership with Google, we want to continue to expand that relationship and leverage the resources that they can provide to us. And then developing that curriculum for the chemistry of our course, now that's been approved by the Board of Ed, um, fully developing that curriculum so it can continue to prosper as a course here in Granby Public Schools. That is. Thank you. So, any questions? questions? Questions, comments from the board? Thank you. Um, anybody? I just want to thank Chuck. He's helped me tremendously as one of the committees that I chair, taking a big leadership role. He's also my in-house tutor for technology. So as we're trying to make some shifts, uh, we're running all of our professional administrative meetings this year through Google Classroom. So all of our administrators are in classrooms this year uh, so we can help teachers in that transition. So thank you for your leadership in this, Chuck. Yeah, done a great job thank with you. technology. Thank you. Can thank I just uh, pick his brain since I think this may be the first time you're before the board, second. I think. Second or first? Second. S last year for advisory, but I had teachers and students yeah, to help, right. to help, help with everything else. So uh, what's your experience been like? Uh, how are things going for you, Mr. Harshman? I love it. It's um, something that I've loved. In my first year within this district, we talk about innovation. And that's kind of been a passion of how can we look at things differently. And what I've loved about being part of Granby Public Schools is the creative problem solving and being a part of a network of individuals constantly looking for how to uh, take on new challenges and be creative around how we, we help students and keeping students at the center of that, that vision. Thank you for all of your efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome Thank to you stay, me. but <laughs> not required. Thank you very much. Public comment. If any member of the public would like to address the board on an issue, come up, tell us who you are, where you live. Um, because of freedom of information, we are not permitted to respond to your public comment, but we will take it. And uh, thanks for your ideas. Any member of the public who would wish to comment? Otherwise, consent agenda. Can I have a motion? I'll move that the Grandy Board of Education adopt the consent agenda. I'll second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And I abstain. Old business, there's no old business to report. Moving along to new business. First reading of policy 6142, basic, basic instructional program. Um, Yes, yeah, so I haven't received any um, feedback in terms of uh, revisions or additions. I don't know, if, uh, Chris, if you have. I have not. Okay. So that's first reading that will advance at the next um, on the next agenda to the second reading. New courses. Um, may I have a motion? I will move that the Granby Board of Education approve. Actually, there are multiple courses in here. Chemistry of Art. General Portfolio 1 and 2, 3D Studio 3, and 3D Studio 4. Awesome. Discussion on this. Rosemary, um, I would ask just because there's quite a few courses and it's been actually kind of an interesting process, if you could just give us a 20,000 foot view on the changes. Um, well, I, I would defer to sure, Chris sure. for that. Yeah. Sure, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, sure, there's uh, the new course that's listed here is the uh, chemistry of art. So previously, um, as Mr. Hershon uh, was discussing, it was a club. Uh, and it was a club that demanded a lot of uh, teacher time and student time. And it was also a club that had a pretty high level of rigor. Uh, and uh, uh, Ms. Hecht and Ms. Patton saw it as an opportunity for an interdisciplinary elective to be offered. Uh, and so it was kind of born through the STEAM committee and has eventually made its way uh, to a course proposal here for you. Um, the other things that are listed are not new courses, they're just changes of academic levels, moving some courses from academic to honors, um, really trying to create the appropriate pathway for students um, to eventually take 
um, AP portfolio and AP studio um, to start at, in the academic offerings and then eventually have a pathway that's going to get them to be successful in the AP courses. So that's what's behind this. Thank those, you. Any questions? Those technology courses or art courses? Oh, there are art courses. Um, I think I know the answer to this, but the chemistry of art, that grew out of originally a GEF grant? Yes. Yes, it did. Was it a couple years of grant? Just remind me, because people are always interested. I'd have to go back to see how many years they, they funded that, but it was for, it was for a couple of years. I, I just need to do And then we took it over as a club. The yes. Board of Ed took it over as a club, and now it's grown into yes. actual competitive. Mm -hmm. Great, Any other questions? For just a Chris? reminder for me, how often do we do this? Is it just once a year where we uh, review and approve courses? Uh, no, it's a revolving, it's a revolving process, and it can come at any particular time. But uh, we certainly want to make sure that if it's for the following year, that it's the timeliness to get into the program of studies. Okay. Tori, uh, just a um, general question. I think. I'm not sure if anything can be done about this, but I have some friends who are taking a college-level accounting course. Um, it's from Aznantec, I think it's connected to there. And it's, it's a full-year course, and they're given a, um, it's just academic course credit for that. And uh, if there's a possible, it's a college-level course, and the highest level of, of accounting that's offered at the high school. So if, I'm not sure if anything can be, Done, but like just putting it out there, uh, maybe an honors credit would be uh, much appreciated by uh, students who want to take that later. That's a great comment. Um, Mrs. Greeny may be your first starting point, or <laughs> but that's a great Mr. Trumper, either or. Thank you, Dory. I'll avoid that. the principal with one last thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> and we have other courses at Islam Tuck as well. So that's forward thinking. Appreciate that. Um, if there's no other discussion or questions, I will take a vote. All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. New business. Fiscal year 20 plus one budget. Our first look at this. Alan? I'll just pass out to the board what is actually going to go up on the screen. Chuck is in the house, Ms. Powell. Have you need any help? Mr. Hurst, he didn't, he didn't leave. <laughs> Proceed. Um, I don't think of any additional handouts for this particular slide. I'd like everybody to see it, but in absence, that, I'll talk through it a little bit. Uh, I would like to thank um, my minister of team, many who are here uh, this evening. Um, actually, my staff, who's represented by Casey, uh, because they do a lot of the work on the ground to start with, and then department chairs, and then through the administration, uh, and then to uh, central services. So I'd also like to recognize Chris and Amy, uh, Linda and also Anna, who's not with us this evening, uh, for all of their uh, legwork. So uh, I'd like to, oops, there you go. If I may for a moment just give an overview, because uh, it's the start of January. I don't know what you are. You're probably very busy. Uh, just a wee calibration again, just of, of process. Um, I don't know if you want to say anything first or not. Can I just jump into this? Okay. Uh, so the, the Plus, the plus one is just sort of an enigma, this plus one, what does it mean? Well, essentially the plus one refers to looking to a year ahead, so it really we're planning out five and ten years ahead. Uh, so we try and give the Board of Finance a five-year picture of kind of uh, the big variables that are going to affect uh, the school system and ultimately uh, the taxpayers. So it includes the operating budget, the quality and diversity budget, small capital and large capital. Uh, so this whole document, you'll see the large capital. I'm not really going to talk at all about the large capital because you've passed the large capital that's gone to CPAC, it's well and in, in underway. Uh, but this is also a model that uh, CPAC can utilize as it looks to what's the school system looking 
uh, like as it this needs as it moves forward. So uh, essentially, the plus one. I'd, I'd encourage the board to look at it as um, as a framework for just setting up the, the budget discussion per se. Uh, the danger of the level of detail that we've got into for a plus one is that. You, can, you have a tendency to look at things and like things or not like things and cherry pick things or otherwise. Um, let me reassure you, you have plenty of time to cherry pick stuff, okay? Um, so the process is basically, uh, we're having a discussion this evening and we'll have a, probably at least one other discussion before we move it to the uh, uh, three board meeting and that's on January 22nd. After that three board meeting, the Minister of Budget, which typically people refer to as a superintendent's budget, uh, I present that on behalf of the administration to the board. So it could be it could be above this percentage, below this percentage. It could include some stuff here, not include some stuff that's listed. Um, but you'll you'll invariably take over that budget, uh, the administrative budget, and essentially make the modifications where you feel they need to be made, and adapt the budget where you feel uh, we can pitch that to the taxpayers and it serves the needs of the kids. And then ultimately that goes, goes to the town meeting referendum. So that's basically the processes. I will mention that uh, since this is quality university, it's hard to do it all in one night, but the quality university is essentially done in this document, but we devote a whole other meeting to quality university just to look at that separately and really get under the hood of it. Um, so you'll have that opportunity that takes place in February. So that's really the process. Um, so the big picture, 30,000 foot picture, looking at the five years that, that is, this document uh, lays out is an average of 3.77. Typically, very accurate in the first year, second year pretty accurate, and as we play out a little bit, it gets, a less, it gets less. But let me say this, over the years of use, this is a very helpful planning document because many of the things that were on things for years, they continually get the seeded and watered, like things like the strings uh, program, other technology programs have been on it, bless you. Um, and eventually they either fall off or they make their way as, as the major priority. So the big picture just that it says right there, right? Um, this comes in at 4.83. Um, if you're like my uh, administration, some of them thought, well, there's no chance of changing that number. Uh, I need to be higher or otherwise. Again, I would say to the board here, that. Don't fixate on the number. Um, if for some reason you think it should be lower completely, that's fine. Um, but there's plenty of room to, to massage that and discussions to, to unfold. Uh, I do think uh, the times, their plus one has come in also around five or six or so, around about there just as a frame of reference. So there's, there's the big picture there of um, 2.47, what's in the base. If we don't do anything and just move things along uh, in terms of what contractual obligations and so on are. Uh, that we have. New program, I'll call it new programming, um, not including special education positions. So special education, um, and that includes a new, pro a new, pe new personnel that I'll talk about. Uh, the board has had this long standing sort of uh, wish to move things from the quality and diversity back into uh, the operating budget. And um, the quality and diversity has all, always sort of been sacred to some degree, um, and the board and the state hasn't really touched it. Well, two years ago, it touched it in the sense of uh, it, it, we got 60% left on our sort of uh, support academic support grant. Uh, so there's room to think that 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 maybe is not so sacred as it used to be. Uh, although they're, they're still doing the chef versus a they're going to go back to court, so they can't really not, not fund. So, but anyway, um, this does represent just over a half a percent of uh, positions that were taken from quality university, including clubs and uh, uh, kindergarten positions, and moved back into the operating budget. Retirement savings, whenever we have retirements, we typically save a little bit on that in terms of you're not typically hiring top of the scale type, type scenario. Uh, I, I put enrollment, even enrollment, even though it says zero for enrollment, uh, because typically in any given year, it may not say that and has not said that. Even though we're going down by 44 students this, next year, it's just the way the, the, the way they fall in the grade levels this year. Uh, they, I, I've reduced two staff members, but put two back in again to primary school uh, for class sizes. So invariably this, this year, or next year, sorry, FY20, I don't see a savings, even though 40 kids drop. Normally, I can. In fact, I've been fairly aggressive over the years with these numbers. Uh, looking at the numbers right now that I have, I don't feel as if I can do that. Uh, 
So that's why you see us here, and that's why I'm being very transparent by putting it up. So with that, um, I'll talk you through the, I'll talk you through the, this document at a very high level. I'm not going to read everything to you, so um, stay with me, and um, you can slow me down as we go, or we can wait to the finish, and then we can regroup. Can I just sure? I don't, these numbers don't add up. I don't. Is the, the they don't add up. No, what two point four seven? If you add, oh, they don't add up to four point eight three. They should. Isn't there a neg? Is, is the Q and D supposed to be negative because of the moving of the teachers? No, I move I move Q and D monies into the operating, so right. it's added to the operating budget. It's added to the right. Got it. But still, to, did I do this wrong? I, I actually hope you have. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Have Believe me. I was just eyeballing it, but I decided to do it. Seven six. I think we're good. Eight. You do not trust me. That's okay. Except trust but verify. Five point one six and then minus thirty three, right? Oh, four twenty. Got it. Okay. Um. So, oh, so the other part of the question was, if you, I mean, you could show something for. There are some. There are some. The base could, would be bigger, and then you've got some. We have a net. Uh, there's a change in staffing that's allowed because of enrollment. I, I'm just. I understand what you're saying. I just think that the the optics in the community of where's the savings from declining enrollment. Well, when you look at two or three percent, there is saving. That that includes savings from declining enrollment. Otherwise, it would be four or five. But maybe there's not a way to show it this in this. Yeah. Well, I would also just, I would just also remind people that the, the savings and the decline in enrollment is, is over a million dollars a year whenever we close that school. Right, on a running basis, which yes. is part of the same argument I've heard, which is then why do we still have a 2 or 3% budget increase? Because otherwise it would be 4 or 5 or 6%. Right. <laughs> you know, a 2 or 3% is, is barely holding our heads above water. But... Uh, it, it's fine. Yeah. I just, I, I th you know, another way to do it is the base would be bigger, but then there is still savings from enrollment. Yes. Okay. All right. So um, uh, the only thing I will note on the first page um, is that the things that are in this plus one should you should feel aligned to board goals, aligned to priorities. We have discussed. You have discussed along the way. Um, they shouldn't be, for the most part, out in the left field. Okay, there's maybe some good new ideas, but they should be somewhat in line with, with the goals and what, what our priorities are. So with that, uh, I'll move forward with it. So the assumptions, again, I don't want to read all the assumptions to you. Hopefully you've had a wee bit of a chance and you're sort of um, scanning it right now. But from transportation to health the salaries, these are all built in. Uh, we build in master set five uh, for, sa for salaries for people. For um, special education, you have decreased by 28,000. Would you show a positive up there? So, so typically, uh, I'll, I'll qualify that the special education here, because typically this number here is very high. This is the tuition, this is the outplacements for, for transportation and tuition. Typically, that is a very high number. For next year, we're actually decreased that number. If you're wondering why is why did I show special education up here, this is for outplacement transportation, which is the big, okay. big, but that includes the new positions for special education for next year. Okay. So the total and act, that actually includes this decrease. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm just. Yep. So is that I mean because last year when we approved the budget. We didn't anticipate the big increases that we experienced. That's correct, yes. So which number are we talking about up here? The one that we voted on last year or the one that we're actually um, experiencing? Working off right, I, I, we're actually working off what we're experiencing right now, okay. real, real time. Yes, that, that's a good point. Yeah, so that might be another... But to both of your points, that might be something when we think about you know moving this forward outside of this high level view is trying to find a way to to illustrate that. I think that's helpful, both the savings, continual savings from declining enrollment, as well as the fact that we're dealing with bigger. 
Now, let, let, me clar let me clarify that for you, though. Okay, so this, these are all changes at 4.87, or sorry, 4.83 above this year's budget, right? So that special education number is above this year's budget, but the decrease in 28 that contributes to, what, to that is is projected against what our current enrollment placement of special education outplacements are. So that 4.83% is an increase over this year's That's existing correct. budget That's correct. with that ad added 200,000 special ed that happened. Yes. Yeah, because that, there was no new money added right. to the budget. It, it was moved from other places. The bottom line of the budget didn't change from what was voted in. What you should feel comfortable is the budget that we have developed for special education is based off currently what we're working on and our projections moving forward from next year. Because what we do is, like for instance, the reason you see a, a, a $28,000 deficit or decrease is because we have significant outplacements that there's not a case anymore. Uh, so. So let me go back. I got. No, go ahead. I'm not trying to make a point. I'm trying no, to actually understand. Yeah, okay. The 4.83 percent increase is is that assuming that this year's budget we don't get any money that we just find the money to cover the deficit, or is it based on assuming we do get new money and for the for the deficit? It really has nothing to do whether we get the money for this year or not, because uh, one way or the other we have to solve that problem. That that sort of that ship has sort of sailed, sort well, of speaking. Well, if we find the money, then our budget doesn't change. If somebody gives us more money to cover it, then our budget is higher for this year. Well, we can't. Well, it's, it's, it's not be true, yes. But we, so is the 4.83% increase on the bigger budget, assuming no, we get no, a higher No, okay, no, I can't, can't really do it that way because okay. it needs to go from budget to budget. Good. Okay, so that's on the... FY19 budget. FY19 budget that we are that we are that we are in right now. That yes. we are working on. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah, and if we go over, which we are going to, at this point we're over. That would have to, would have to be made whole through the special education agreement. Okay. So uh, that's the big picture right there. Um, the enrollment again is uh, down 44 students. Again, um, I just can't realize savings from that given where the placements are. Um, I will say this: that uh, the, when you see the quality university. I have left out that the quality and diversity does not include the possible enrollment of preschool open choice students. You'll see in the out years that we're suggesting we do that, but I have not built in the revenue for that because until the board wants to build that revenue in and take that, that risk or, or paint that picture. Um, why is that important? Because when we get the quality and diversity, the board wanted a positive balance after five years. Well, it's, I had to do some, some things in this budget to maintain that balance. If you took those children and those students, you would have like a $300,000 balance after five years. But I have not reflected that. So we'll get to that when we... Uh, I think you'll find class sizes are, are, are appropriate um, under this scenario. Uh, the small cap on page two, so the way this sort of works, FF and A furniture, fixtures and equipment. Maintenance is, is maintenance, uh, facilities department, technology is technology, and transportation. So the way this sort of works is you'll see the first column, existing leases for technology. So we did nothing, we would have to still pay that amount of money based on uh, sort of five year leases for technology purchases. Uh, so the spending uh, that we have for uh, furniture, fixed and equipment, 100,000. Maintenance is 300,000. Uh, the technology is, you say it's 31,000, but it's really 31,000 um, on 283,000 of actual spending. So it's the least payment. So the 31 is the payment in the first year that we have to pay off 283,000 of spending. The 13,000 in transportation is the first lease payment of $120,000 of spending if that sort of makes sense to you, and then you get the total. This is uh, this is 950, which is $50,000 more. When the Board of Finance did its model, it, it, it looked as if it was $75,000 more of small capital. Um, I did the ratio of what we have had in the past versus uh, the time, and just took that ratio and 
Um, I did make a communication with the Board of Finance Chair just to apprise them that I was doing that. Um, if it has to increase or decrease, then we'll have that discussion as we go through. Bottom of page two just shows you the, the sort of summary of the uh, percentages, and we'll just get to the, the content in a moment. Quality and diversity, um, I'll talk about that when we get to the quality and diversity page. So the big summary here is um, the way this is sort of laid out, you have the staff. Kelly, do you have a, do you have a copy? It's very hard to, to might be helpful for you if you want one. Just don't want you to sit there not wondering what's going on. So um, we basically have the staff listed and we have notables. Notables are just like things that, you, that might be of interest to you, you think might be what we've discussed before or just something to note at this particular point. So if you look at the wee box, 2019-2020, um, it says 13.8 FTEs, full-time equivalent teachers or, or staff members. We have taken two staff members, kindergarten teachers, out of Q&D and put it into the operating budget. So that's for a net basically of 11.8 staff members uh, change in the first year. Off those 11.8, 8.2 of them are special education and 3.6 are regular education and you'll see them down here in a moment. So off that 11.8, 8.2 are special education, 3.6 are regular. So we've basically outlined here some of this um, prioritized actually relatively, I'll say relatively, uh, in order of uh, priority. So number one, two and three, I don't have any option over, essentially. And the only option I have over there is make sure I verify um, and tick all the appropriate boxes to make sure that we do need those. But I really don't have any option of those. Those are, those, those are required by uh, law and also special education teaching assistant. Before we start, if you recall, we added over the course here uh, seven teaching assistants in special education, right? And I have to pay for, we have to pay for those first before we do anything else. So that's, that's kind of where that one first one comes from. I'm not going to go over the positions. You can read them yourselves under special education. I have a couple of teaching assistants, um, two half-time ones for safety uh, at Wells Road in terms of um, I would like at, at Wells Road sometimes I have teach, uh, teaching assistants covering two classrooms for recess and stuff. That's just we need to correct that basically. Uh, five, six, and seven, or sorry, five and six just move those initiatives forward. Um, one of those initiatives are going to be supported by $20,000 from the GEF, which is the next level of the strings program. Uh, the maintenance worker, if you remember, was unfunded last year. Uh, that comes in at the administration's uh, highest priority after uh, the things we've just uh, talked about. The Spanish teacher is just to make, make up the actual position across the district work in terms of traveling time. Nine, nine transfers to kindergarten teachers. Uh, Ten is a, is a math interventionist at uh, Wells Road. It's the only school that we really don't have a math interventionist at. Uh, the, and number 11 talks about why we have a net zero of um, in, uh, FTEs for um, enrollment. Alan, just a quick question. We only have two kindergarten teachers? No. No, we have we've got six kindergarten six. teachers. Okay, so this is just moving the last this. one from quality and diversity. Okay. Um, Excuse me, Alan. Yes. I'm just coming back. What was the approved? What was the approved budget increase last year when we went to vote? Was 3. it three point four nine? Three point four nine. Yeah. That's what it was. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, I, I guess I'm still confused. If we're half a million dollars, roughly speaking, in the hole. Mm -hmm. Then, and that's that's your new base. Mm -hmm. Then, then we should be working off a bigger base than the approved budget. No, we're working we're working off the actual budget that was developed, not the not the end of where we forecasted. If we're forecasted to be over, but right. we don't work off that. Okay. We don't work off that. We work strictly budget to budget. Okay. So the. Go ahead. We'll have to figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 but we work budget to budget, though. Yeah. Okay. What you can be reassured as the special education 
takes into account all the dynamics have happened. Yeah. Right? Because that would be foolish not to. Right. Where those children are, what the situations are, who's coming back, who's moving on, all of that. Yeah. And actually, uh, the special education budget is redone in February based on the latest projections. So you can be reassured again that that number might change, but um, I don't think that the tuition, uh, the outplacement for tuition and transportation will will be significant because we have a significant number of people not coming back. Now, whether it would change midstream next year is a whole different discussion. If you, if you forgive me, I will not go over all the notables. I'll just let you, like you can read those, um, but they're just listed as things of note. They are not all new. Some of them are actually incorporated in the in the budget, and we have. So, for instance, we have monies for professional development. Some of those monies might be going towards some of these. Um, I can tell you which ones are new above and beyond that are sort of included in this number up here. Um, but I'll let you sort of like take a wee look at some of those, and uh, we, we'll, we'll circle back on them. So, the format of the document really takes this, this format. It projects enrollment, personnel, notables moving forward. Uh, through 2024, uh, and you can see that there's less projected as we go out. Page seven is the uh, funded small capital projects, as is page eight, and these are on these are pretty uh, in finalized sort of mode at this point in terms of prior prioritization. Things might come up, but. But essentially, all that hard work has, uh, has taken place, and then the priorities have, have been, are, are shown in the document. On page nine, I typically show you what is unfunded, what are some of the big, the big things that uh, our administration and over in front of us here have asked for, but uh, have not made that 4.83 for. Some of the reasons could be we have a disagreement. Some of it could be because uh, we think we might be able to do them within the actual FTEs. Um, or there just wasn't room given, given the actual number that we came in at. So I've listed some of them. Typically, the board likes to see some of those. Page 10 and 11 is the actual sort of line items. And you see, you see under FY 2020, it's Fletcher. It's a 4.83%. Page 12. So page 12, if you look, this is the, this is the Quality University, and um, we're going to have another look at Quality University based on Magnus School enrollment, Open Choice enrollment uh, in February. We'll sort of take that apart. Um, but this is a summary of it as it stands at the moment. The big thing that I just draw your attention to is under certified FTEs, You'll see where it says full day kindergarten, right? And you'll notice that the full day kindergarten teachers sort of fall out of this. That's because uh, we're taking two of them out of this next year, and then another one out the following year. And after that, it won't be there. So that's, that reduces that expense. The same a little bit uh, for the teaching assistants. Uh, we'll be reducing uh, the teaching assistants. And you'll see that that's in this document, articulated in this document throughout the years that uh, we'll be taking the FTE TAs back into the operating budget. Those are the that's a big takeaway right there. Uh, the one to one, which over the years has been sort of topical for discussion, uh, just includes the seventh the replacement of the seventh and tenth grade, um, just the cycle of the seventh and tenth grade Chromebooks, and four carts uh, for the primary school. The bottom right hand number, if you notice, is just barely above a positive number. So if you, again, this model doesn't take into consideration the income uh, that we would receive if we took the open choice students at the uh, preschool level, which I've built into the plus one model to show, but I haven't built in the revenue for it. If you're so interested, there's a 10-year uh, small capital uh, estimates moving forward is shown. And then the attachment is the um, large capital projects that we've already adopted and moved forward. So I think that the easiest thing to do is sort of like let you sort of peruse this a wee bit. You can either ask questions now, um, defer them, or just immediate reactions, questions for clarification of how it's organized or other ways. It's not everything, but it's most things. And I, we, we, we don't conveniently leave something out. Um, 
if we do, it's a, a genuine oversight, but at this point, I'll just open the floor for discussions. So I would just level set for the board. Um, this is all of our real first look at this budget, and then it becomes, um, it start, as we start to get more into it, it becomes our budget. Um, right now, this is um, the administration, administration's ask of us. Um, so I would reiterate Alan's comments of, you know, getting two in the weeds tonight in terms of clarification questions, <coughs> absolutely. Um, we've already had a, a few good ones already, um, but this is mostly, and disagree with me I, if I'm wrong, but my view of this is it's like the first bite, and then we're gonna start to digest it and then go through the notables and go through um, the things that jump out at us or that we might have questions on. And typically, I think we email you questions, um, call, uh, yeah, you, you, you can certainly email the questions. Um, just send questions to me if you have them. Um, I, I would just encourage you just to keep them relative. Well, look, if you, if you need clarification, what does this mean? Then obviously I have to explain what it means to you. Um, but I wouldn't get too fixated again on. I think what the board has to have a discussion does it really sort of does it line basically to what we're talking about, right? Or is there big oversights or otherwise big adjustments to be made? But ultimately. Do you feel comfortable taking, in this case, it's a 4.83, just to, as the first flush as the uh, plus one budget, right? After that, the superintendent's budget comes back in full detail, right? Um, and then you take it over and do what you, do what you have to do with it, so. You'll see if I build in some things of uh, moving forward in two years out, just some notables to talk about. Uh, there's placeholder for school resource officers in two buildings, uh, split between the time. Um, I'm not committed to doing that at the point, but it's, it's in there as a wee placeholder. Uh, shared technology between the town and ourselves is, is in there again. Uh, we're ready to go on that. Um, so you'll see those types of thinking in there. So each each percent is about three hundred thousand. Yes, that's correct. And the teachers yep. are moving the the. Kindergarten teachers are is 0.6 percent. Right, that's correct. Yeah, which has been something we've talked about. Yeah, year, and then we end up getting up on it. Right. Um, sh should we, uh, in the same way that on our regular monthly reports, we're starting to also watch and look at the revenue that we don't account for in our budget? Is that relevant at all? In, I mean, I know we don't budget for it, but the town will be. Uh, well, well, as part of as part of the uh, as part of the uh, administrative budget, I present what the revenue right what the revenue forecast is because, like for instance, in our we present that in our budget. I present but it we in don't the present it. and present and you guys present it in your budget, yes. Right, but we do, you don't usually show it in the plus one. Uh, no, not 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 don't like the revenue is we could certainly give a general idea because we the special education is so individualized yeah. uh, and that we do it by student right. that we, we kind of know what the That's reimbursement's going to be. Right? Yeah. Uh, it'll probably be lower because tuition and transportation is dying. Yeah. But okay. You know, I, I would say this. Um, one of the things that's helped me over the years is to try to um, look at this a little bit differently than we look at obviously your budget and the scrutiny that we do there. Um, I think Ron um, took me aside when I first joined the board and kind of taught me this is when I look at this I go through it and I, I look for any surprises. Is there anything in here that I go wait a minute where did that come from right and, and look at it as sort of a lens as do these things generally support the goals and objectives that we've adopted and get us to the next step that we are always talking about. Um, at first blush to me, it, it seems like it does do that. Um, I don't think the Board of Finance is going to approve 4.83, but, but as we sit here tonight, I'm relatively comfortable that there's no surprises in here. This is all stuff that's been well thought out, and it's a good, it's a good starting point for us. I would remind, so I just remind the board, thank you, Mark, I just remind the board that, that Part of the process of the three board is for our responsibility to communicate to the boards uh, what our needs are. Understood. Um, so the the um, I see from the the first slide we're, we're anticipating another discussion on the 16th. 
Is that where you're looking for us to finalize? Well, yeah, that? I mean, I, just, I don't want to think, think for a moment. You want, I mean, you got this over the holiday. I don't want you to think for a moment that, like, this, you have to rubber stamp something here. You know, you need to even attempt to digest this. And, and certainly anything, any clarification that you can do ahead of time with me is just really helpful, probably. Do we need to approve this before it goes to the three Well, technically, either way, it has to get over there, whether you tacitly approve it or we actually go through a motion to approve it. I'll defer to what you want to do in that case. But Can I ask one, one very specific question sure. on the maintenance worker? Yes. I, I know I asked this last time. I don't remember the answer. So is, is that um, worker assigned to any particular school? Or is it, is no, it's a district. That's just district. Okay. Okay. Um, in, on page five, just, just a, a clarification question, sure. um, on the staff under number seven, enrichment coach at the primary school, there's no dollar amount attached to that full-time employee? Oh, there is, yes, it's built in, um, it's, wait a minute, we edit there, it's just, so you can see there, for an example there, we're, we're pushing that enrichment model down, um, as a, as an idea. Yes, it is actually built in. So it's built in where, just so I? It's built into the model, but I'll, I'll make the correction about okay. the actual Thank you. Any clarifying questions for Alan? Um, <coughs> a lot of work. Well, we're, we're in pretty good shape. Um, I want to thank the staff too, because it, uh, actually from the teachers to the administration, because we started this early to actually make the uh, make sure we met the board of finance uh, guideline, given the fact that this is a first meeting back after the holiday. I would encourage our two students to to feel free to look at this and um, feel free to bring back questions or to ask me questions. And I think this is on a later agenda item, is it? Um, but I know there was um, discussion Alan's going to be out of town on the next board meeting, currently scheduled for January 16th. Um, and so one of the, his recommendations, because this is so critical, is to move that board meeting possibly to Tuesday, January 15th. Is that correct, Alan? It's either that or, or well, and well, first of all, I would appreciate your consideration if you can. Um, so the, the, the suggestions I would make are the 15th are actually next week. But if that's better, if Wednesday's better, just move me forward to next next. You gonna do that now? I think that, that would be smart to do that now. I, I think next week might be a little too soon, given what we're okay. digesting. And um, if can you can't if you can't make the fifteenth work, I'll just make my schedule work all the way. So because I just I don't think it's going to work for. No, well, the 15th, we have the secretary's from, negotiation. We have to oh, negotiate, you do. but okay. that's from 5 to 7. Right. So it would only impact the finance committee. Would, would, couldn't happen unless we switched, uh, which I'd rather not switch the negotiating no. session just because no, there's no, 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 you can't do that. No. Um, but we could do the board meeting at 7 because we don't go over on those. We just wouldn't have the finance committee meeting, but we'd have to do that some other time. Or how about Monday the 14th? It doesn't look for me. I can't do the 14th either. I can do the 15th for our whole board meeting, but we were talking about having another single item Sub subcommittee meeting. meeting. Could we and keep Brandon, that on for the 15th? You, you or want to do you change that to the 15th? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I well, either one. I mean, I don't know who, what everybody else's availability would be, but I could do that. We could do that one on the 16th. Well, keep that. Let's figure out the board meeting first, because that's, and then we can talk more about figure the subcommittee. Okay. Um, so, I'm okay on the 15th. Okay. I'm good. 15th. I'm good. So why don't we move the next regularly scheduled board meeting to Tuesday, January 15th at 7 p.m. and then, um, since we have the board meeting scheduled. Um, we could have perhaps a special finance. Well, we've moved finance to Wednesday night, if that works, because of the negotiating team for the secretaries. So we'd have two subcommittee meetings on Wednesday. The only thing you wouldn't, you wouldn't have Anna or myself at that meeting. 
on the Wednesday because I wouldn't be here. And Anna won't be we here. wouldn't have Anna on Tuesday right, anyway, though. She's, she's out for. So we could just do the the policy subcommittee curriculum policy subcommittee yeah, on just, Wednesday. Yeah, we'll I guess have, we'll have Chris. So. Chris will be with us. I'm just Wednesday. talking. I'm just talking about okay. finance. Yeah. Well, so we will just wait. When is Anna back? I basically have. I got the information. Oh, okay. Anna will be back for several weeks. Oh, okay. Okay. So. So we will move the next regularly scheduled board meeting to Tuesday, January 15th at 7 p.m. here. Appreciate that, folks. Thank you very much. Oh, then we can have it in our regular digs. Will you be available? And we'll just cancel our finance to film us. <coughs> could, could we work off lane? Yeah. To, to, to see, see if there's any better solution. There's a, there's a, a big deal with the senior center, something about the intersection. Okay, busy night. So well, let's let's go forward with moving that to the 15th because it's critical to have Alan, and this is a critical meeting for our board. So we'll we'll our next board meeting will be Tuesday, January 15th at seven o'clock, and we'll work out all the sticky and details curriculum later. Sub, at curriculum subcommittee, you guys want to meet? Yes, um, and I will defer to. I, I can do either the Tuesday or Wednesday, whichever works is, for you all. I'm going to ask if next week is. Possible because I know that that would help with the high school calendar if you have available the ninth, the, the ninth. Um, for the yeah. curriculum subcommittee. Mm -hmm. I could do the ninth. Um, there's almost do we want Margaret to join us? If she's available, yeah. I can do the ninth. So why don't we do that? Sure, the ninth okay. for curriculum uh, subcommittee, and um, I'll work offline with uh, 5 30. Jenny just to see if we can coordinate something for the finance. Okay, of course. All right. Maybe. No, that's why I'm not here. That's what I said. I wasn't going to be here. Oh, you won't be here yeah. for that either. Right. right. I'm sorry. The curriculum subcommittee on the 9th, 530. 530. Okay. And um, if you're beautifully confused, you should be better. No. Thank you. It's not even here. Okay. Um, thanks for, thank, thank you very much. Thanks for the courtesy and rescheduling. And we will move on to miscellaneous board standing committee reports, curriculum, policy, technology, and communication. So we did meet tonight. Um, we had a long meeting, uh, so long in fact that we didn't get through the entire agenda. Um, but we have a lot of important uh, issues to discuss, so we had to table some uh, until our next meeting, which is why we decided to have uh, another meeting, which will be next Wednesday at 530. Um, so first, um, Chris uh, talked to us about things that are going on in the district, specifically um, the summit for um, the ELA, uh, K through 8 ELA math and, um, and math strategic planning. That was completed and um, they are ready to roll out um, the action plan for, for those areas. Um, we briefly discussed um, the recommendations or, or suggestions that are um, for the Chinese program, um, and the, there are some ideas for uh, increasing the rigor. Um, so those are um, ongoing at the high school, um, and also Chinese will be brought down to um, um, into for six and seven for next year um, into the middle school. Um, next, we talked about um, implementation of the equity task force recommendations and the fact that the Graustein Foundation will not be supporting another grant um, uh, for the Connecticut Center for School Change. So Chris is actively exploring alternative resources for that. Um, um, so that was essentially uh, his monthly report. Uh, a summary of his monthly report. Uh, the two areas that we discussed in greater detail were uh, in the area of new texts and high school graduation requirements. Um, and uh, <coughs> I'll summarize in terms of new texts, um, the subcommittee did approve uh, the Chinese text and the French text, uh, as well as an art history text, which we um, added to the agenda and approved, uh, approved that for the course. 
Um, in, there was one a text, however, the science text, that we had a very lengthy discussion about uh, the rigor of the text and, and how it aligns with uh, the next generation science standards. Um, and there was a lot of questions around, uh, is that the best text for our district? So that's going to stay in subcommittee and we're going to discuss that further. Um, and uh, the subcommittee, we just have additional homework to do in terms of uh, reviewing the text uh, and, and doing maybe a comparison on what we have now, where we need to go, and, and what's out there to help us get there. Um, we also talked about high school graduation requirements. It seems like we go through this and revise it every uh, every year almost. Um, I was going are, to say every week, but. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, those requirements are, and I want to defer to Chris, if you don't mind, to um, in terms of looking at where we are currently and how the credits break down um, and the reform for 2021 and 22 to uh, what the reform is going to look like for the class of 2023. Um, so what's similar is a 25 credit graduation requirement. Uh, and uh, the current <coughs> form that we have for the classes of 2021 and beyond uh, mostly fulfill the, the basic structure of the new reform. So we're going to keep things as similar as possible for now. Uh, the only shift of significance is there's an additional half credit of uh, what we call wellness, so a health uh, slash school safety requirement that's a half credit. So students would experience two credits in wellness instead of 1.5 as they currently do in the 2021 reform. So this is uh, would be in place for the class of 2023, which is the incoming freshman class. And there were also some shifts in uh, classes. So for example, personal finance, which we now have as kind of a standalone um, is is now lumped into the science area or the STEM area, um, but that remains. It's just kind of relabeled, recategorized, if you will. Um, and then in terms of uh, the question that I had in terms of the wellness, how they broke down the uh, PE health and safety, we didn't have that safety piece beforehand, um, but that's not defined by the statute. So um, we do have some some curriculum that addresses that, but what it actually means or what, what why they broke it out separately, we don't exactly mean. Um, any other, any questions about the graduation requirements? And then finally, um, we also talked about new courses, and I'm also gonna defer to Chris. If, um, this will remain in subcommittee for further discussion, but just to kind of set out a framework there were um, five recommendations, and three of them are pre-AP classes, uh, pre-AP visual arts, pre-AP um, algebra one, and pre-AP uh, English course. Um, we spent, we focused a lot of our time on the algebra one course to see, um, with a lot of questions around how that fits into the framework we have now, where, why, where it would go, and um, how it impacts, um, may impact down the road, the middle school curriculum um, as it relates to the algebra um, curriculum in the eighth grade. So with that, I'll, I'll um, ask Chris if he could provide us with some additional details. Yeah, that's, well, but I would add, um, uh, just a reminder, I know we've talked about it in subcommittee quite a bit, I'm not sure about the full board, but we applied uh, to be part of this pre-AP pilot, and we are one of 100 school districts selected across the country to be part of the second cohort. Um, and that's a pretty exciting opportunity for us. So the three courses um, would be in English, math, um, and visual art. And uh, it means different things for different courses. Uh, but it's a great opportunity for students. Uh, it's a great opportunity to build rigorous curriculum that would give as many students as possible access to uh, rigorous coursework and position them to take AP courses as upperclassmen if that's what they choose to take. And um, I'm trying to think of what uh, other areas that we discussed. Um, 
Yeah, we, we also um, talked a little bit about honors calculus. Um, currently um, at the high school, we have academic calculus and then AP calculus. And um, um, we had Margaret Bastian's uh, uh, come speak to us briefly. Um, she graciously gave up some of her time, as did Ms. Petruzzi, um, to uh, talk to us about um, the courses and, and new texts. Um, but talking about the rigor of the current calculus um, class, academic calculus class, and why um, the argument for making that an honors class. So um, again, we, we ran out of time. Um, so we're going to just have additional discussion at our subcommittee meeting on the night. Can I ask about that? So that decision, does it also impact the curriculum going down into the middle school? For calculus? Yeah. I don't believe so. That was simply a, a changing the course designation. Um, again, you know, currently as it stands, it's, an, it's a labeled an academic class. Um, but the administration, uh, as well as the math department, feels that the rigor of the class rises to the level of an honors class. Um, so it would be, a, uh, it wouldn't change the curriculum um, necessarily. That at least that was my understanding. Um, we didn't, we didn't get to complete our discussion, but um, it didn't seem that the the curriculum itself was changing in the in the class. It's just the designation, academic to honors, okay. and the weighted GPA. Right, and the impact that it would potentially have for students. <coughs> for, for what it's worth, academic calculus sounds like an oxymoron to me. That was exactly what Melissa said. <laughs> That's exactly said. what I said in some committee. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but there was a lot to discuss. And so oh, yeah. No, I mean, I don't uh, have to dis no, but it's true. Oh, right. it's, um, I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, those will be ongoing. Thank you, Rosemary. And that's all we got to. And finance, personnel, and facilities. Uh, we met last time and had a brief board meeting after. And I don't remember what we did at the meeting. <laughs> You'll see the minutes when they get approved. <laughs> Thank you. Other board-related reports, Crack and Cave. Uh, we haven't met, but just a brief announcement. Uh, Jenny has um, graciously agreed to serve as my alternate. Um, my travel schedule is going to change here, uh, as it does in every odd number of years. So we're going to work out the details with Jenny. We haven't met since the last time I remember about. Right. Next meeting is the 16th. Thank you for serving, Jenny. Appreciate that. Um, next meeting is the 16th. Oh, that's our, is that our? No, withdrawn. Uh, Grammy Education Foundation. Uh, the <coughs> hasn't met recently. The next meeting uh, is the Monday before that, what, the 14th. And I will again have the conflict that I have, unfortunately. So. Are you going to make that one? Al will be there. Okay. Um, start time study. Lynn, we've heard about the robust responses. Yes. Um, it's, that is the, the big news. We've gotten a lot of responses. We have not looked at them. Um, but clearly this is an issue about which the community is willing to sit down and take a survey about. So Excellent. We'll see what they have to say. When do you meet again? Last Monday of the month. Okay. Uh, calendar of events, self-explanatory. Those of you with kids or who just like to do fun things will be at what we have. Um, what do we have on here? When is the, the Grease musical? When is that? It's March. 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 Okay. Uh, I believe it's the weekend of the 15th, 15th 16th. Mm -hmm. Board member announcements. Can I go again? Yes. Just to clarify <laughs> what I just did. So I'm going to be gone, right? So my travel schedule for business starting in February has me leaving town early Monday mornings and coming back late Friday afternoons till early June. Um, I'll be at the first board meeting in person for sure in February. Mm -hmm. And then after that, probably not likely in person, but I will work with Linda because I think on virtually all of them I should be able to participate by phone. And I, um, if you want me to, I'm reasonably sure I can participate in the finance committee meeting by phone too. So thanks. Yep. And something that 
I reiterated to the board and I, we learned at the Cape Caps convention is that is absolutely appropriate and allowed. Um, the only times that board members should not um, participate in board meetings remotely is for executive session or negotiations because those are privileged and not public public meeting. They're, they're a meeting, but it's a, an executive session or negotiation type meeting. Does that include a caucus related to the negotiations? Because we have done them. We have done that when, we, when we're just meeting know. internally. You can ask Tom. I suppose we should check with him because yeah. it's, yeah. it's just easier to get together by phone sometimes. Yep. Yep. Thank Thank you. Just yeah, okay, action items. Um, action items. One right there. Just that one? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and there's no need for an executive session this evening or non-meeting, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.